everyone. Pleasure to be here. I'm Sally Eaves, and I'm speaking about my passion, really, which is three words, tech for good. And I hope to share that vision with you today. This picture here, I think, really sums up that ethos. This was taken a couple of months ago in India, um, and it's a project I'll come back to a little bit later on in the talk, but it really shows and showcases technology and community together, and how we can all work together collectively to make a social difference. I don't know about you, but when we look at the um, popular press, both newspapers and social media, we often see quite scary stories about technology and what's happening. Kind of robots are going to take our jobs. Um, also, very legitimate questions, actually, around ethics and AI. Things are changing very, very rapidly. It's hard to keep up on a, on a daily basis. Um, and it's right to question that. It's right to do that transparently and for everybody to be involved in that conversation. What I'm really keen to do is, is to kind of showcase the positive aspects of technology and what we can do by working together. So this is what we're going to do today. This, this headline here actually is from the uh, New York Times just a week ago. And again, it's addressing this issue really that we see the fear factor, we don't see the potential benefits. So let's get a bit more of a balance in that conversation. So I specialise in kind of very disruptive technologies, things like blockchain, which is essentially the technology underlining cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum that we're seeing a lot around in the press at the moment. And I also specialise in AI and machine learning and also VR and AR, so virtual reality and artificial intelligence. And I really see 2018 as a year of transition. And I think the optimum benefits are going to come when these technologies come together. So it's a question of convergence, really. Um, one of the projects I'm working on and I'm co-founder on really relates to the video we saw this morning, the really inspiring one about the human genome. Um, and again, it's, it showcases what happens when we bring together science and disciplines such as this with the latest technology. So this is genomics and blockchain coming together and opening up access to opportunity for everyone. So this is Project Shavon. As I say, I'm co-founder. This was about six to eight weeks ago in India in quite a rural setting where there's not typically access to the latest technology. Um, and what we're doing, it's not just around the technology itself, it's an awareness issue. Um, and also, so everybody has, has access to this. Um, this is me actually doing some, some blood tests and things like that and also some DNA testing as well. Um, so we visited various schools, also hospitals, really speaking to people, finding out what the local issues are and spreading that awareness, also within education settings as well. So, so something I'm really, really passionate about and uh, it was a really real joy to be part of that. And we're coming back later in the year to continue that good work. So as part of this, we've got a foundation that's being set up. So again, we're showcasing how you can do good business and do good, but also share that and really create shared value. That's kind of two key words that sum up everything I'm really involved at. So that's Siobhan, and again, a bit more on that later on. The other thing I want to talk about is that we're always hearing about the latest thing, the very emergent disruptive technologies, but actually a lot can be done with existing technologies. There's so much that we can leverage. There's so much that we can repurpose. Um, that would be typically classed as lower tech. Take the old Nokia, the 3310. There's some fantastic work being done in areas where there isn't internet to help children with literacy issues. So we can re really think quite creatively here, be very pragmatic about doing things differently. And also technology that's used in one sector, take that into another one, we can make excellent new developments. It doesn't have to be the most expensive and the latest thing. So I really want to draw attention to that. So one thing I do, um, as well as kind of my different, different roles, is I do an awful lot of mentoring work in spaces, you may have heard of them, called Maker Spaces, Hack Labs, and also Fab Labs. It was an idea that originally arrived from, from MIT and is spread across the world globally. And often you find these settings in quite deprived areas. Um, and often there's great opportunity to, to reuse um, space within the community that's not being put to good purpose. So they're great. And I think the sign at the top, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Show me how to fix it, don't fix it for me. So this is all around peer-to-peer -peer mentoring. It's sharing of knowledge. It's a very much an open resource model. And I find them really empowering places to be involved in. So I love mentoring there. I love help making these communities develop. And again, it's a great example of the interplay between digital technology and digital innovation and actually innovation in communities and the op optimization of physical space. And these places, they have zones. So you have zones where you can wander around, a bit like me on this circle here. Um, and um, you've, you've got kind of libraries, physical things you can look at. Participants um, can share ideas, sit around on a couch. People donate things from the community. And it's a great place to come together. And the other thing, and there was a talk earlier about curiosity from Joe, which I thought was fantastic. Um, and again, you have an opportunity here for chance discovery. You can bring together the latest in technology, but also things like arts, like jewellery making, 
and things like robotics and stuff too. So different things are coming together, and I think that's where you can make really unusual discoveries and experiment. You can learn, you can try, you can fail, and you can try again. So it's very, very iterative, and I'm really, really passionate about that and opening up opportunities for people to take part. I think what we're seeing at the moment is the opportunities for democratisation. Um, and I, we've seen that in 3D printing, for example, but we're seeing it in opportunities like this. I really want to spread that word and help to get more people involved in it. So these ones are from um, spaces in the UK. So you'll see a fabrication lab that's on the right-hand side with the stairs going on up. You've got peer-to-peer -peer mentoring with the soldering that's going on. And on the left-hand side, this is a place called Access Space in Sheffield. And you've got um, a great example of people showing their work there. And it great, this is great for identity building as well. Um, somebody at, at that space there was saying, I feel like an artist, I feel like I belong. So it really does a lot of work to showcase talent in very unexpected ways. And it means a great deal to people. So this is not always about the latest in technology. In, it is a wide ranging word. So I think we need to open up that conversation about what actually technology is and what it means to us all. This project there, this is in Monterey. So I've got some great connections in, in, in Mexico. I've had some really great discoveries there. This is at the foot of the mountains. You've actually got kind of a police guard around the building. You've got a local community has come together, donated the cement, donated the you know, physical structure for this building. And then people are donating their time. So it's not always about money. It's just donating time, resources, enthusiasm, your skills, and bringing all these things together to make a difference. This is kind of some robotic kits with Lego and various other things that people are using. And over a period of time you pass through the different experiences you build confidence you get empowered and you learn skills along the way and again you have different areas here for yoga and I did some very dodgy dancing um, and very other different things like that are going on and again it's not technology in isolation there's a different creative skills we can bring together um, and I'm really passionate about that because I at the end of the day I think the greatest technological innovations come around to creative imagination as well we have to have a more holistic view so yeah, coming back to the, to the point of change. So we have got challenges, as I acknowledged right at the beginning of that. We, we do have to acknowledge that there are challenges, for example, around data privacy, around data protection, challenges around transparency, around attention and social media. There are a lot of things that are happening. We need to be aware of that. But if we do, if we're creative and pragmatic, we can optimise the benefit for the greater good. So one of the things I'm involved in, so good news coming, so I want to stress the good news aspect in my talk here. So I, I'm bringing together a range of piloted activities that I've done in the UK, in Thailand, in Mexico, and various other states. So it's been tested in different sort of cultural contexts and different um, challenges around resources too. So it's called Aspirational Futures, and this is a way to scale up change. Because what we're finding is this silo is a great activity, but we don't always know about it. Whatever city we're in, there can be great things happening kind of like a mile away. You won't necessarily know that's, that's the case. So I think one of the things we've got to do is be better at scaling up through greater awareness, through better best practice sharing, and through mentoring. I think mentoring is absolutely essential. Um, it can be done very informally, but I, I think it's one of the greatest things. And also showcasing role models. I think that is absolutely critical too. So aspirational futures is all around that. Scaling up change, showcasing talent, showcasing projects, and helping people match up skills, talents, needs, and opportunities, and bring those things together. STEAM, that's what this is meant to represent. I thought I'd put something slightly different. So it's not necessarily the trains, but um, I do really want people to kind of come on board with this vision. So as part of this, there's a lot of focus around STEM activities. I'm passionate around STEAM. So I think arts needs to take centre stage as well, an equal stage, I should say. I think infusing that is absolutely critical to get the base, best of our creative talents together with technology and make better change happen, more purposeful change. So again, as part of Aspirational Futures, the projects are a mixture of projects with purpose, so projects with purpose for social change and involving all of these different skill sets together. So yes, yeah, STEAM is the, is the big focus within that. And the other thing I wanted to stress is that I think it's so powerful to spread these ideas, to inspire each other, to share ideas, to challenge, but also to have um, pathways to actually make this change um, happen. So I want to help people move from inspirational ideas to the actualization of this change, because I think that's sometimes a sticky point. We have great ideas, we share them, but then where do we go from there? 
So as part of the initiatives I've been describing, the focus is on there. So it's very, very practical. It's very applied and very hands-on. So I really want to continue this conversation. I don't want it to stop here at this talk. I want to try and help spread a contagion. Look, you can see, I can see my reaction there. So I want to help spread a contagion to really focus on the applied. Let's make this happen. Let's build it. Let's share it and do that across continents. So let's just not dream it. Let's do it too. That's really the ethos of this. And in my next slide, um, it looks like I'm channeling um, the film Ghost, I think, with this next picture here. But, um, <laughs> but um, we, need, we need to get our hands in. We need to get stuck in. We need to do that to together. And it will be messy at times, as per this picture. There will be challenges on the way. But if we work together, I really feel that we can create social impact. And technology, despite the challenges, despite the risks, despite the things we do need to discuss, acknowledge, and work on together, we can optimise this. We can foster technology as a source for positive social change. And also, I think we can better align profit within business with purpose. I think, you know, I, I work a lot with young people. I know people who are leaving jobs, particularly around Generation Z, because they feel unfulfilled. They want to do something more. And I think we need to help people be able to do that in their day jobs, but also outside that, in community education, and in projects like Aspirational Futures. So I'm passionate about spreading that word. So my final slide is really kind of over to you guys. I hope this helps to you to think about technology a little bit different, to share a new perspective about what is possible and how we can go forward. And I'm passionate about continuing this, sharing that conversation and keep it going forward. So please look out for developments and let's continue that conversation and be inspired and change together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.